The Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider RHIC is the first and one of only two operating heavy ion colliders, and the only spin-polarized proton collider ever built. Located at Brookhaven National Laboratory BNL in Upton, New York, and used by an international team of researchers, it is the only operating particle collider in the U.S. By using RHIC to collide ions traveling at relativistic speeds, physicists study the primordial form of matter that existed in the universe shortly after the Big Bang. By colliding spin-polarized protons, the spin structure of the proton is explored. RHIC is now the second highest energy heavy ion collider in the world. As of November 7, 2010, the Large Hadron Collider LHC has collided heavy ions of lead at higher energies than RHIC. The LHC operating time for ions lead -lead and lead -proton collisions is limited to about one month per year. In 2010, RHIC physicists published results of temperature measurements from earlier experiments which concluded that temperatures in excess of 345 MeV 4 tera kelvins or 7 trillion degrees Fahrenheit had been achieved in gold ion collisions, and that these collision temperatures resulted in the breakdown of normal matter and the creation of a liquid like quark gluon plasma. The accelerator RHIC is an intersecting storage ring particle accelerator. Two independent rings arbitrarily denoted as blue and yellow rings circulate heavy ions and or polarized protons in opposite directions and allow a virtually free choice of colliding positively charged particles the Eric upgrade will allow collisions between positively and negatively charged particles. The RHIC double storage ring is itself hexagonally shaped and 3,834 meters long in circumference, with curved edges in which stored particles are deflected and focused by 1,740 superconducting magnets using niobium-titanium conductors. The dipole magnets operate at 3.45 T. The six interaction points between the particles circulating in the two rings are at the middle of the six relatively straight sections, where the two rings cross, allowing the particles to collide. The interaction points are enumerated by clock positions, with the injection near 6 o'clock. Two large experiments, Star and Phoenix, are located at 6 and 8 o'clock respectively. A particle passes through several stages of boosters before it reaches the RHIC storage ring. The first stage for ions is the electron beam ion source EBIS, while for protons, the 200 MeV linear accelerator LINAC is used. As an example, gold nuclei leaving the EBIS have a kinetic energy of 2 MeV per nucleon and have an electric charge Q. Topic: +32 32 of 79 electrons stripped from the gold atom. The particles are then accelerated by the booster synchrotron to 100 MeV per nucleon, which injects the projectile now with Q. Plus 77 into the alternating gradient synchrotron AGS before they finally reach 8.86 GeV per nucleon and are injected in a Q equals plus 79 state no electrons left into the RHIC storage ring over the AGS to RHIC transfer line ATR To date the types of particle combinations explored at RHIC are P plus P P plus Al, P plus O, D plus O, H plus O, Cu plus Cu, Cu plus O, Zr plus Zr, Ru plus Ru, O plus O and U plus U. The projectiles typically travel at a speed of 99.995% of the speed of light. For O plus O collisions, the center of mass energy is typically 200 GeV per nucleon pair, and was as low as 7.7 .7 GeV per nucleon pair. An average luminosity of 2 times 1026 cm2s1 was targeted during the planning. The current average O plus O luminosity of the collider is 87 times 1026 cm2s1, 44 times the design value. The heavy ion luminosity is substantially increased through stochastic cooling. One unique characteristic of RHIC is its capability to collide polarized protons. RHIC holds the record of highest energy polarized proton beams. Polarized protons are injected into RHIC and preserve this state throughout the energy ramp. 
This is a difficult task that can only be accomplished with the aid of Siberian snakes in RHIC a chain 4 helical dipole magnets. Run 9 achieved center of mass energy of 500 GeV on 12 February 2009. In run 13 the average P plus P luminosity of the collider reached 160 times 1030 cm2s minus 1, with a time and intensity average polarization of 52%. AC dipoles have been used in nonlinear machine diagnostics for the first time in RHIC. Accelerator components The experiments There are two detectors continuing to operate at RHIC, STAR 6 and near the AGS to RHIC transfer line and Phoenix 8 Phobos 10 completed its operation in 2005, and Brahms 2 in 2006. Among the two larger detectors, STAR is aimed at the detection of hadrons with its system of time projection chambers covering a large solid angle and in a conventionally generated solenoidal magnetic field, while Phoenix is further specialized in detecting rare and electromagnetic particles, using a partial coverage detector system in a superconductively generated axial magnetic field. The smaller detectors have larger pseudorapidity coverage, Phobos has the largest pseudorapidity coverage of all detectors, and tailored for bulk particle multiplicity measurement, while Brahms is designed for momentum spectroscopy, in order to study the so-called small x and saturation physics. There is an additional experiment, PP2PP now part of STAR, investigating spin dependence in P plus P scattering. The spokespersons for each of the experiments are Star, Jongbu Shu, Brookhaven National Laboratory. Phoenix, David Morrison, Brookhaven National Laboratory, and James Nagel, University of Colorado Boulder. PP2PP, Wolodic Gurin, Brookhaven National Laboratory. Topic: Current results. For the experimental objective of creating and studying the quark-gluon plasma, RHIC has the unique ability to provide baseline measurements for itself. This consists of the both lower energy and also lower mass number projectile combinations that do not result in the density of 200 GeV O plus O collisions, like the P plus P and D plus O collisions of the earlier runs, and also Cu plus Cu collisions in run 5. Using this approach, important results of the measurement of the hot QCD matter created at RHIC are Collective anisotropy, or elliptic flow. The major part of the particles with lower momenta is emitted following an angular distribution d n d phi 1 plus 2 v 2 p t cos 2 phi display style dn d phi propto 1 plus 2 v underscore 2 p underscore mathrm t cos 2 phi pt is the transverse momentum phi display style phi angle with the reaction plane this is a direct result of the elliptic shape of the nucleus overlap region during the collision and hydrodynamical property of the matter created Jet quenching. In the heavy ion collision event, scattering with a high transverse PT can serve as a probe for the hot QCD matter, as it loses its energy while traveling through the medium. Experimentally, the quantity RAA a is the mass number being the quotient of observed jet yield in A plus A collisions and NBIN times yield in P plus P collisions shows a strong damping with increasing A, which is an indication of the new properties of the hot QCD matter created. Color glass condensate saturation. The Belitsky Faden Karayevli Potov BFKL dynamics, which are the result of a resummation of large logarithmic terms in Q squared for deep inelastic scattering with small Bjorken X, saturate at a unitarity limit Q S 2 N P A R T 2 Display style Q underscore S carrot two propto Langle N underscore Mathem part Wrangle two with N part two being the number of participant nucleons in a collision as opposed to the number of binary collisions. 
The observed charged multiplicity follows the expected dependency of NCH A1 alpha s qs2 display style and underscore mathrm ch a prop to 1 alpha underscore s q underscore s caret 2 supporting the predictions of the color glass condensate model. For a detailed discussion, see e g. Dmitri Kartseyev et al. For an overview of color glass condensates, see e g. Ionku and Venugopalan, particle ratios. The particle ratios predicted by statistical models allow the calculation of parameters such as the temperature at chemical freeze out TCH and hadron chemical potential mu b. The experimental value TCH varies a bit with the model used, with most authors giving a value of 160 MeV. A recent overview of the physics result is provided by the RHIC Experimental Evaluations 2004, a community wide effort of RHIC experiments to evaluate the current data in the context of implication for formation of a new state of matter. These results are from the first three years of data collection at RHIC. New results were published in Physical Review Letters on February 16, 2010, stating the discovery of the first hints of symmetry transformations, and that the observations may suggest that bubbles formed in the aftermath of the collisions created in the RHIC may break parity symmetry, which normally characterizes interactions between quarks and gluons. The RHIC physicists announced new temperature measurements for these experiments of up to 4 trillion kelvins, the highest temperature ever achieved in a laboratory. It is described as a recreation of the conditions that existed during the birth of the universe. The future RHIC began operation in 2000 and until November 2010 was the most powerful heavy ion collider in the world. The Large Hadron Collider LHC of CERN, while used mainly for colliding protons, operates with heavy ions for about one month per year. The LHC has operated with 25 times higher energies per nucleon. As of 2018 RHIC and the LHC are the only operating hadron colliders in the world. Due to the longer operating time per year, a greater number of colliding ion species and collision energies can be studied at RHIC. In addition and unlike the LHC, RHIC is also able to accelerate spin-polarized protons, which would leave RHIC as the world's highest energy accelerator for studying spin-polarized proton structure. A potential major upgrade is ERIC, the construction of a 10 GeV high-intensity electron-positron beam facility, allowing electron-ion collisions. At least one new detector will have to be built to study the collisions. A recent review is given by A. Deshpand et al. Topic: <laughs> Possible closure under flat nuclear science budget scenarios. In late 2012, the Nuclear Science Advisory Committee (NSAC) was asked to advise the Department of Energy's Office of Science and the National Science Foundation how to implement the Nuclear Science Long-Range Plan written in 2007 if future nuclear science budgets continue to provide no growth over the next 4 years. In a narrowly decided vote, the NSAC committee showed a slight preference, based on non-science-related considerations, for shutting down RHIC rather than cancelling the construction of the Facility for Rare Isotope Beams FRIB. .By October 2015, the budget situation had improved, and RHIC can continue operations into the next decade. <laughs> Critics of high-energy experiments Before RHIC started operation, critics postulated that the extremely high energy could produce catastrophic scenarios, such as creating a black hole, a transition into a different quantum mechanical vacuum, see false vacuum, or the creation of strange matter that is more stable than ordinary matter. These hypotheses are complex, but many predict that the Earth would be destroyed in a time frame from seconds to millennia, depending on the theory considered. However, the fact that objects of the solar system e.g., the Moon have been bombarded with cosmic particles of significantly higher energies than that of RHIC and other man-made colliders for billions of years, without any harm to the solar system, were among the most striking arguments that these hypotheses were unfounded. The other main controversial issue was a demand by critics for physicists to reasonably exclude the probability for such a catastrophic scenario. 
Physicists are unable to demonstrate experimental and astrophysical constraints of zero probability of catastrophic events, nor that tomorrow Earth will be struck with a doomsday cosmic ray they can only calculate an upper limit for the likelihood. The result would be the same destructive scenarios described above, although obviously not caused by humans. According to this argument of upper limits, RHIC would still modify the chance for the Earth's survival by an infinitesimal amount. Concerns were raised in connection with the RHIC particle accelerator, both in the media and in the popular science media. The risk of a doomsday scenario was indicated by Martin Rees, with respect to the RHIC, as being at least a 1 in 50 million chance. With regards to the production of strangelets, Frank Close, professor of physics at the University of Oxford, indicates that the chance of this happening is like you winning the major prize on the lottery three weeks in succession, the problem is that people believe it is possible to win the lottery three weeks in succession." After detailed studies, scientists reached such conclusions as, "...beyond reasonable doubt, heavy ion experiments at RHIC will not endanger our planet," and that there is, "...powerful empirical evidence against the possibility of dangerous strangelet production." The debate started in 1999 with an exchange of letters in Scientific American between Walter L. Wagner and F. Vilcek, in response to a previous article by M. Mukherjee. The media attention unfolded with an article in UK Sunday Times of July 18, 1999 by J. Leak, closely followed by articles in the US media. The controversy mostly ended with the report of a committee convened by the director of Brookhaven National Laboratory, J. H. Marburger, ostensibly ruling out the catastrophic scenarios depicted. However, the report left open the possibility that relativistic cosmic ray impact products might behave differently while transiting Earth compared to, at rest, RHIC products, and the possibility that the qualitative difference between high E proton collisions with Earth or the Moon might be different than gold on gold collisions at the RHIC. Wagner tried subsequently to stop full energy collision at RHIC by filing federal lawsuits in San Francisco and New York, but without success. The New York suit was dismissed on the technicality that the San Francisco suit was the preferred forum. The San Francisco suit was dismissed, but with leave to refile if additional information was developed and presented to the court. On March 17, 2005, the BBC published an article implying that researcher Horatio Nastase believes black holes have been created at RHIC. However, the original papers of H. Nastase and the New Scientist article cited by the BBC state that the correspondence of the hot dense QCD matter created in RHIC to a black hole is only in the sense of a correspondence of QCD scattering in Minkowski space and scattering in the ADS 5 times X5 space in ADS, CFT, in other words, it is similar mathematically. Therefore, RHIC collisions might be described by mathematics relevant to theories of quantum gravity within ADS, CFT, but the described physical phenomena are not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Financial information The RHIC project was sponsored by the United States Department of Energy, Office of Science, Office of Nuclear Physics. It had a line item budget of 616.6 million US dollars for fiscal year 2006 the operational budget was reduced by 16.1 million US dollars from the previous year to 115.5 million US dollars Though operation under the fiscal year 2006 federal budget cut was uncertain, a key portion of the operational cost 13 million US dollars was contributed privately by a group close to Renaissance Technologies of East Setauket, New York. RHIC in fiction The novel COSM ISBN by the American author Gregory Benford takes place at RHIC. The science fiction setting describes the main character Alicia Butterworth, a physicist at the Brahms experiment, and a new universe being created in RHIC by accident, while running with uranium ions. The zombie apocalypse novel The Rising by the American author Brian Keane referenced the media concerns of activating the RHIC raised by the article in the Sunday Times of July 18, 1999 by Jay Leak. 
As revealed very early in the story, side effects of the collider experiments of the RHIC located at Havenbrook National Laboratories were the cause of the zombie uprising in the novel and its sequel City of the Dead, in the Raylorea's memory novel series by the American author Othello Gooden Jr., beginning with Raylorean Dawn ISBN 1 billion it is noted that each lunar city and their space station is powered by a RHIC. See also The Isabel Project Large Hadron Collider <laughs>